this is John Carlos, and I'm here with a look at the Star Wars Black Series action figure of the Dark Trooper from The Mandalorian. I ordered this from Amazon, and this is the condition that it came in. The outer box that it shipped in was fine. This is actually the condition it was in when they put it in the box to ship it. Thankfully, I'm not an inbox collector. I don't really care about boxes. Did anybody else out there, when watching The Mandalorian, geek the F out the second you first saw these Dark Troopers? I had major flashbacks to my childhood playing the original Dark Forces in the 90s. And uh, seeing them in live action was awesome. Having this action figure in my hand, super awesome. It's a pretty good figure. Um, it's a deluxe figure, and I guess, you know, considering it is, uh, I don't know, tooled from a lot of new parts and is slightly broad in the shoulders. They think they can charge more money for it. I don't see why this is a deluxe figure. I hate that Hasbro started doing deluxe versions of figures that would never normally have been deluxe just a few years ago. Um, but here's just a close-up look at the sculpt of all the little bits of the figure. Obviously, these these uh, joints are very noticeable at the hinge of the elbows, the knees, the shoulders, and whatnot. Well, not necessarily the shoulder. The shoulder is the ball joint underneath. Very loose joints, I might add. This chest piece is just something that sort of hangs on the figure's frame. Really loose ankles. That's my problem with this figure. Very loose ankles. Um, but I gotta say, the shine of this figure, the shiny plastic, looks really, really good. Um, what little paint there is on this, like on the chest, on the eyes, looks good. But uh, overall, the, the, the draw to this is the sculpt of it, the size of it, and the shine of it. We do get some accessories. We get this blaster, uh, and then there's a little bit of silver paint on it right there. And then we get some fist hands, which, which will change onto the figure in a moment. And then we get these little rocket blasts for the feet. Here's the figure holding the gun. I gotta say, it looks pretty good. Also worth mentioning is that these little shoulder sections hinge. So if you're bringing the arms all the way up, these will move accordingly. Popping off the hands is easy, and popping on the hands is also pretty damn easy. The fist hands are only really there to put the figure in the flying pose. Here it is with the little rocket jet blast, and I gotta say, that looks uh, pretty good as far as, you know, maybe playability or uh, posability if you wanna suspend this figure in, in a flying pose. Um, one little nitpick I have, though, is that the base of the neck, it'd be nice if there was a secondary hinge so I can bring the head further back when it was in a flying pose. It, in fact, when I, when I play with the head, the base of the neck wiggles a little bit, but there's no like hinge there. It's, I don't know if it's just a basic swivel. Either way, it doesn't help you out. And this figure would really be helped out if the head can go a little bit further up. That would really enhance the flyability of it. Uh, but still, this figure, it's fun. It looks good on the tabletop. It's got weak ankle joints, but uh, all that shiny black and plastic form does look really, really cool. I'm digging this a lot. Thanks for watching, everybody. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this figure. And if you want to be up to date with all my latest stuff, be sure to smash that subscribe button.